Curse of Strawberry Vamped is finally here on Store Shell. Hi, my name is Alon Levine from Dungeon Trash, and here we'll be taking a look through the highly anticipated foray back into the misty land of Barovia. This was given to me by Foxy Innovations as a review copy. In fact, I'll be linking to them in the description below. I will preface that I am actually a survivor of the original module, and have seen most of it through the player's perspective. However, I have looked through the entire module with the DM's eyes. I will say that I do have quite a high bar set for this adventure, and don't worry, I won't be spoiling it. When I first received it, I was actually quite shocked at the sheer size of the package. It comes in at about 2 pounds, or about 0.9 kilogram, and is more than 16 inches or 41 centimeters tall. It comes in an absolutely gorgeous coffin shaped box, with cardboard sleeve running vertically or over it. Removing the sleeve, we can get a much better look at the amazing detail on the box. It really evokes the gothic car roots, and the front of the box features a beautiful rendition of the Dreadlord seal. While I could ramble on about the box for far longer, it's far from the star of the show, and I think it's time we open this ominous coffin. As if designed to invoke the image of Van Helsing opening a coffin to strike down Dracula himself, the first thing we are greeted to upon unsealing the box is Dirad asleep in this beautiful piece of art. However, this insert serves more than just being a wonderfully evocative image, for on this flip side, his stats are printed nice and large for use in game. I can almost sense the fear in the player's eyes when the DM reaches for this page. Following this, we are greeted with two sections of the box, the larger section with the revamped module facing us, and the smaller section with the tarot deck facing us. The module itself is a soft cover, however it can be stored in the box so it won't be taking any marks off or like that. As for the changes in the books, well, it remains wonderfully balanced and was of the coast's best attempt at a sandbox module for 5th edition. Encounters have been altered and this includes the infamous Death House. Any discussion further will lean into spoiler territories, however, I will be discussing the changes made to the books in light of certain controversies towards the end of the review. Moving on from the module, we have what I believe to be the true star of the show. This is the Creatures of Horror insert. The 20 page book has all the unique monsters and NPCs into the setting and their stats and information. Meaning you can run encounters without having to flip to the appendices section every time there's a combat, or if you need to roll a skill or saving throw. I really hope Wizard of the Coast could take this into forever consideration for any special editions, and if I'm being really hopeful, any standard books in the future. Following this, we have an absolutely massive map, which unlike prior books, this one's already separate from the books, so no worries about tearing paper. On one side, we have a massive uh, map of Barovia itself, with the separate settlements around the edge. However, this is not a player-friendly map, as a lot of the important story locations are marked on the map, though with the letters instead of the actual names. On the reverse, we have an absolutely amazing isometric map of Castle Ravenloft itself, it's not a battle map, but a wonderful breakdown of the labyrinthine dungeon that the DM can use to orientate themselves. I do, however, recommend lamination, as due to the thinness of the paper, it will likely tear due to excessive use. However, with the good comes the bad, where they could have given us handouts that are individual, so they could be handed out when the players are actually given them in story. They instead gave us the cardboard equivalent of a photocopy of the handout section from the original book. While two of them work quite well as they are dedicated to one specific handout, two of them have handouts from entirely different encounters altogether. This can be fixed with your own uh, copies, or, well, this shouldn't be necessary. And aside from that, I would have really loved some non-cursive uh, ones, as they are very unfriendly to dyslexia otherwise. Next, we have a quick reference book to the meaning and info regarding the Soraka deck. However, this is very little importance compared to the actual deck, so I will talk about the deck a bit later. Last in the large section, we have the DM screen. This is a modified version of the reincarnated DM screen, but it is worthy inclusion as it includes Barovian random encounters, Barovian names, the Mists of Barovia rules, card reading rules, and a Barovian land features, making it very useful for running Curse of as well as other games if you don't already own a DM screen. The exterior player side is wonderfully decorated with beautiful art depicting Death House, Castle Ravenloft, the Abbey, and an old windmill. 
Finishing up with the large section, we can finally move on to the smaller section, starting with the Turaka deck. This deck is 54 cards, and it is beautifully illustrated by Chakulka. They are foil stamped as well, meaning they actually have a nice shine to them in the catch the light. They are also lovely and large, making it very easy to read on the table. I quite like that they fit nicely into the box, which has also got the same grand gothic designs. Last on the list of components, we come to the postcards, which there is a staggering amount. Three designs with four of each of those designs, we come to a total of 12 of them. It really seems that Watsi is leaning on the replayability of Curse of Strahd, with the absolutely beautiful art being done by a group called Couple of Crooks. No, really, they are also the ones who did the art for the DM screen. And the macabre humor is absolutely on point. I'm quite fond of the first one you see. The one that reads, Welcome to Barovia. You wish you weren't here. Going back to the changes in Revamped, they're quite subtle, with the major changes being the removal of negative stereotyping to the Vistani, a faction that quite closely resembles the Romani people of real life. Another change being the removal of a character's shame towards their disability. Whilst previously they would hide it away, now they really... It actually seems that they don't care about it, that it's just part of them now. Which is quite an admirable thing, and considering that character being an absolute badass, I don't see it as a problem. On a closing note, I'd say this is a good 4 out of 5, with the only negatives being the handouts and no real addition to the module content-wise. However, it is still very well written and has enough lovely goodies from the deck to the screen to my personal favourite, the Creatures of Horror booklet. With the original adventure being a fan favorite, I firmly believe this box set is enough to sink your teeth into. Or should I say, fangs into. This has been a Dungeon Trash review. For more of our content, check out twitch.tv slash dungeon trash, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Till then, have a good one.